Getting started in Nearpod is really easy. So there's two ways to go about it. You can either create it in Google Slides if you have the upgraded version. Um, but what I'm going to do is focus on the silver version, which is the free version. So you'd go to the drop down menu that says create and then create lesson. And then just like in Google Slides, you create your presentation. So you'd probably start with giving it a title, you'll see. Then you go to this plus sign to incorporate activities. So I usually start with the slides and this is just to present information to my kids. Um, so I would create this just like I would Google Classroom. Um, and I might just include the information here. I can add text, a video or image. Um, sometimes I like to add a text, oh, uh, change the layout so I can um, add the information on one side and then a picture or some sort of image of it on the other. And when I'm done with that, I hit save and exit. If I wanna add another slide, um, I would just go to the plus sign again and add slides. But if I wanna add an activity, let's say I've added a few informational slides and I wanna act, add an activity to test them about what they already know, allow them to practice the new concept, there's a bunch of ways about um, to go about it. So, or a bunch of different activities, I guess only one way of going about it. So I'm gonna highlight a few of the activities here. Um, there's fill in the blanks which I use a lot for vocabulary, quizzes, um, matching pairs, again, is great for vocabulary, polls, which you can use for anticipatory sets, um, open-ended questions, I use a lot for formative assessment. Um, I use it as a ticket out the door, so if I've just um, explained a concept, I might ask them to summarize what we just learned or explain how to conjugate stem-changing verbs, whatever, and then I can look and see if they've understand it, understood it or if I need to go back. I like the Collaborate board a lot. It just makes things a little bit more engaging for the kids. Um, it'll pop out whatever question you might have on the screen, and then they can add. Um, so it might be maybe like make a prediction on what's gonna happen in the story. Or sometimes if I'm practicing like future tense, I might ask what they're doing this weekend. And so um, it allows them to share with their peers and also it can tell you if they're understanding the concepts. There's draw it, um, which they draw things. So let, you could even put just something blank and have them fill in organelles on a cell or whatever, drag and drop, time to climb, um, which is competitive. It is like multiple choice questions and they race each other up the hill. So much like Kahoot, um, they get really into it because they love all things competitive. Um, Flipgrid that takes you so that they can create their own short videos and again, in a memory test. And again, what I like about Nearpod is that um, rather than sending your kids to a ton of different platforms to study vocab or Kahoot, like to practice, um, to answer questions and have it be more fun and competitive or have them go to Flipgrid. It's all in one area. Um, so those are the different activities that I use as formative assessment or as practice. Um, but there are also like ways to add content. So some of these I haven't used, um, like the FET simulation, there's nothing on world language here. Um, so I can't speak to it very well. Um, However, um, the 3D slides, or 3D is pretty cool. It's stuff with like the human body, the cell, ruins. There's all sorts of different things. Um, I use the VR field trip a lot because it allows students to go, maybe go to the jungle in Costa Rica or go to Machu Picchu and take a look around, which is I don't know, pretty cool. Um, and then again, we've talked about slides, audio, which again, as a language teacher, I use. So um, the last one I wanna highlight is the video. Um, I like this one because it's similar to Edpuzzle in which you can incorporate different questions within the video. You can create one that they've, they already have. I don't like them as much and there's not a lot for world language, so I don't use them a ton. There might be more in your content areas. I just choose 
find something on YouTube. Usually I already have an idea of what I'm looking for and have seen it. Um, but again, you can have the students watch it and incorporate questions throughout the video um, to assess their learning and understanding. So I would play it and whenever I wanna add a question, I can either add an open-ended open question or a multiple choice question. So this ensures they do the entire activity and watch the video and also um, you can assess their understanding. So that was pretty much all of the activities I wanted to highlight. Um, I think it's a very engaging tool to use within the classroom. I did use it a lot when we were online, but um, I have been using it within my classroom now just to make sure students, it's so easy for them just to be passive and not really engage in the lecture or the lesson. Um, so this makes it a little bit more fun for them. Oh, and one thing I did want to hit on the video is you can have them do it individually and it will pop up on all of their screens with audio if they have like headphones or something, or you can um, mute their screens and just play it on your, um, like your, your screen up front, but the questions would still pop up on their computer. So um, let me know if you have any questions.